My name's Adrian Cockcroft. Uh, I'm a technology fellow at Battery Ventures. And my experience uh, building microservice architectures has come from spending uh, quite a few years at Netflix, where I was the chief architect. And then more recently, working across a, a lot of portfolio companies and large companies as they work through that architecture. Microservices are important because what people that have built, uh, built applications discover that they're harder and harder to get into production. And they get, as applications get bigger and more people contribute to them, they, they turn into monoliths. And the microservices movement is uh, quite a hot movement right now. There's a lot of people talking about it. But what it's really about is breaking large applications into smaller chunks that can be uh, deployed individually and which let the company and you know, the product be more agile. When you're building applications, what you're really trying to do is get, some, get an idea tested or, or a feature to a customer. And there's really three kinds of releases that people should be concerned about. There's the, uh, I have some code and I should have it in production um, sort of release, the, the actual pushing code out. Then there's the uh, feature re testing release, but quite often A-B testing, where not everybody sees it. And finally, there's the marketing release, which typically is driven by external events and is maybe much more infrequent. You want to do daily releases or even you know, faster than that for just getting things out. You don't want to have your own little branch of the code that goes off into the, off into the beyond, and uh, you take a long time trying to figure out how to reintegrate it later. So that's, it's important that you get the principles are that you can release things immediately and with a lot of um, tooling to basically make it very low friction for a developer to push things into production themselves. So the advantage of doing microservice architectures is that you can get things done more quickly. Now, what that's really being driven by improvements in technology, whereas previously it took a long time to get releases into production, maybe weeks or months. And then when VMs and cloud came along, you could do things in minutes. And now with containers, you can do things in seconds. So when you've got a pipeline to, to production that takes seconds, it doesn't make sense to try and redeploy you know, 5 million lines of Java in some huge uh, monolithic uh, tuple. Um, and what you really want to be doing is re deploying little components of it and have everyone deploying all the time. The challenge is that now developers are much more in control of what's happening because they're the ones putting things in production. So they, developers are now responsible. There's a principle that uh, Amazon originally uh, started talking about called run what you wrote. And uh, Netflix adopted that as well. So that means that developers are on call. Uh, they own a piece of code in production. They own a microservice in production. And when it breaks, you, it's very easy to see what broke and who to call. So that makes it easy, but then they're also responsible. They're not just responsible for running it and deploying it. They're also responsible for scaling it, the cost of running it, and ultimately the security of running it. So that means that the concerns of developers now include being faster, cheaper, and safer or as we might call it, being agile, lean, and more rugged. So for agile, um, a lot of people are familiar with the agile principles, and uh, that they've been gradually speeding things up for a long time. So if you're now releasing, say you have a two-week sprint cycle, uh, and that's, that's a good agile kind of environment, but now we're getting to continuous delivery where daily releases or multiple day releases, daily releases are getting more common. Lean is also uh, basically taking waste out of the production process and the delivery process, so you don't write things that you didn't need, um, doing you know, minimum viable product, getting feedback early, so it really ties into Agile. The, uh, the other, other aspect of Lean is what, as it's running in production, you care about the capacity planning and the cost of operating something, so you have to take a few more, bit more care of that. Rugged's a, a relatively new term, it's not known that well, but it's really about owning the security and, and uh, principles in your software. So you've got to be able to write code which is inherently secure, which uh, does proper key management. You have to sort of manage your attack surface. You have to make sure you don't have buffer overflows. And those responsibilities are now becoming developer responsibilities. I think the days have, have gone where you can take an insecure piece of software, wrap it in a firewall, and, and throw it into production and, and hope that things are going to be OK. You have to design security in from the ground level upwards, and that's the basic principles around Rugged. So the ideal end state for businesses in this new world is that you have applications which are very agile, and they're built largely out of open source components because you can fix them, you can find them, and the whole procurement process is, is very short. Um, your 
your developers are, are pushing to production themselves. Everything is API driven, everything is self-service. Uh, you build automation around things. Um, the, the, what used to be the operations team is now really becoming a platform team. And the platform team uses APIs to get things done. And you can really tell you've reached the, the end state when to get something into production, you, don't, you aren't filing tickets and having meetings. You're making API calls and it becomes self-service. It doesn't mean that you don't have to worry about being lean and secure just because you're being agile. And combining those three things together and balancing them is important as we go forwards.